I want to talk about how we are creating connections with our communities. Um, so I, I have a couple of questions to consider. So what are you doing to ensure that your users feel welcome? One of the highest compliments I've ever been paid as a archives instructor is that the students felt welcomed, that mm -hmm. they had gone to this other archive and they were scared to touch anything. And then they came into the Schomburg Center and there were materials sitting at a chair that they were supposed to sit at. And I told them to pick it up. <laughs> and they were terrified. But <laughs> at the end of the session, they were so comfortable and they had thanked me for making them feel comfortable. So <laughs> what are you doing to make sure that your learners, whatever the age they are, feel like they're supposed to be there learning. Um, what specific items do you have in your collections that have the potential to show direct connections between the archives and the user? So looking back at the Black Panther Party collections, um, and showing like the rage and the hurt of that community that is still happening today. That is one way to show connections. Um, I enjoy showing playbills um, because they haven't changed a whole lot. <laughs> um, and just really connecting your users to these, these everyday items, just one thing happens to be uh, an item that used to be owned by a very famous or important person. Um, but you have those same items at home, passports, playbills, mm -hmm. letters, it's, it's the same material. And how can your community, how can you, your community connect to the institution? So um, the New York Public Library right now is doing, is hosting a pandemic diary. Uh, where you can submit a recording of yourself talking about how your experience has been during the COVID-19 pandemic. And they're keeping those on file for future researchers to access. Mm -hmm. um, are there projects that you can do at your institution that are similar? Um, I'm trying to figure out a way to collect these zines that I'm teaching students how to use. Um, I know other libraries within the New York Public Library does actively collect themes created by New Yorkers. So how can we engage our community to trust us to deposit their materials with us that document their lives? Because all of our lives are important and worthy of study. It's a snapshot into this time that we're living in. and. I don't know about you, but it's pretty exciting out there right now. <laughs> there's a lot going on and there's a lot that your experience is documenting about what we are living through currently. Um, and everyone has their own story to tell. So how can we encourage our users to tell that story and leave it with us for the future? You said so many awesome things there. It, so, and just to choose one to highlight, because I know we need to move on, but I think it's so important that you raised the granting permission for them to touch things. Not only does that help break down that overwhelming intimidation barrier and help them feel welcome, it, it raises the, what I call touchstone experiences Whereas archivists, like that is our, our pleasure. It's like, that's why we're in the gig is to touch history every day. I mean, that's why I got in the job. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and in touching those things, like you, you are literally connecting yourself to that history. Yes. And there's such a, an alchemy to that physicality of it. And I think that's just such a wonderful way for you to grant them permission that they didn't necessarily need, but to break down and invite them to, to touch the things because that history is there for them too. So I think that's just such a great way to do that. 